sex <laughs> now that i've got your attention i'm courtney and i'm sean and this is a gm's toolbox <laughs> of a GM's toolbox. I'm Courtney, she, hers. And I'm Sean. They, them. Very nice. Thank and you. we're going to talk about where babies, I mean, sex, I mean, flirting, I guess all of those things in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about sex. Yeah, no, um, we're going to talk about, because many times, I mean, the Dungeons and Dragons and other TTRPGs are games that are played by a wide group of people, a whole spectrum. Um, and one of the things that sometimes comes up are relationships uh, in the same way that you get those heavy role playing game video games like uh, the Witcher series or the Mass Effect series or um, the last of us, the last of us. Well, yeah, there are relationships in that, but you don't build relationships in the last of us. You break relationships. In the That's last true. Of us. <laughs> you destroy relationships <laughs> in the last of us, especially in the last of us too. Um, but, uh, the, these games where, you know, cultivating a romantic relationship with someone is a direction you can take. And many people really enjoy that. So, um, that is bound to come up in some D and D games as well. And we're here to try and help talk you through what that can look like as a GM. Yeah. I clearly am, uh, the perfect expert to be <laughs> talking about flirting, um, well-known Casanova, Sean McStravick here. We already chatted uh, about this because I was just, <laughs> I, spe I, uh, I feel like I brought the idea up about this episode because uh, I see it so often, whether it's uh, a post about being uncomfortable about it or how to do it properly or all these things in the, in the flirting category uh, tastefully flirting without being creepy like basically it's what all these questions are and uh like i've said in the past i've watched thousands of hours of of uh D, D content and role playing and you you see a you see a, a myriad of ways to do it um and when I brought it up with Sean, I mean, you had to something to the effect of like, yeah, I flirt all the time. I'm a, I'm a flirter. <laughs> <laughs> super, super flirty. <laughs> um, I'm so flirtatious and I'm, I'm so good at it. Um, really, um, just ask all of my exes how great I am at flirting. Um, I mean, uh, and, and, although when you say a phrase like all of my exes, it does tend to lead one to believe that perhaps this person is good at flirting. That's not that's not that many. And I'm not um, my exes were good at flirting. That is that is true. Um, you could ask them all about uh, how to flirt. Uh, they'd be great at that. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I've had the same person since high school. So and I'm 29 now. So. <laughs> I was uh, uh, not not so great, but uh, whereas I'm single, living in a family member's basement, um, that's not oh, it's not true. Hey. I I don't live in the basement. I just hang out in the basement. <laughs> um, if you know what I mean. I wish I could live in the basement. <laughs> Jesus, man, this place is dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we want to chat about um this with y'all and maybe maybe answer some questions you guys might have or um just yeah just chat about what 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 it all means um and maybe you can avoid creepy weird situations in your games totally <laughs> i think first things first is oh yeah it's the c word consent <laughs> 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 you like that i made that uh, up on the spot <laughs> i do like that that was good um that, that was so smooth it could have been a transition hey um uh, cha -cha. But yeah consent, consent. Um, i think that all of these things that we're going about to be talking about uh um should be first of all covered in session zero i think that uh they're yeah 
you need to find consent with your players as far as you know where that boundary is that they uh they enjoy role playing um and what that means for you if that means none then hey that's gonna be none but and also uh understand that some players might like it but some players don't i would then just not do it (laughs) because then you don't want to make some of the players uncomfortable and some be happy you want everyone to be happy that means that there needs to be some compromises but you know yeah if if one of your players is uncomfortable with it then just don't do it and move on because you know the consent the c word consent verbal enthusiastic consent (laughs) (laughs) Really for everything, but um, especially everything in a TTRPG should be done with through the lens of consent. You should not be doing anything that your players or you do not consent to because that makes an unsafe space and we're playing a fucking game. So it should be a safe space. That doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And I think we talked about in our session zero episode. Um, Ding. We referenced it. (laughs) (laughs) We got we got there, guys. We got there. Um, But I I think that we talked about how the my uh, commitment to having some sort of like red card type thing that you can just be like, hey, I'm uncomfortable and we can just, you know, deal with it. Yeah, Uh, I, I think that's a really useful tool. It doesn't fit every group, but I do think it's a really useful tool. And I think that consent goes so far beyond just sex and flirting and relationships every everything you do in a game or even in life it's all a social contract we exist in a social contract and consent is important to all of us so if we're coming together grooming 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 grooming, grooming, if we're grooming together (laughs) uh, if we're coming together to play a role-playing game then we should all be on the same page and we shouldn't be doing anything that puts anyone in an uncomfortable position unless that's what they like um hey uh, hey oh uh, <laughs> i think it's probably gonna be saying that a lot during this episode <laughs> so, a sorry in advance <laughs> um we're children um <laughs> absolute children um yeah. <laughs> you know uh, someday I'll grow up, but I'm in my mid thirties now and it hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> here we go. One of the things about session zero, again, you can check out our session zero episode. Uh, we do talk about consent and Have this is something for how many times we reference it. Oh man, we really should. This is something that should come up in your session zero. Um, yeah. this is something that you should also keep checking in with. Yeah. If... Yeah. Yeah. If during session zero, everyone's like, yeah, no, you know, flirting, sex, I'm cool with that. That sounds sounds fine. Great. That means you can enter it into your game, but you need to keep checking in. And again, this applies to not just sex and flirting. This applies to any sort of, you know, horror, um, really anything you can think of. Just keep checking in with your players, but especially because we have so many sex is such a a minefield for triggering people and for um, bringing up things or putting people in situations that are deeply, deeply uncomfortable or deeply, deeply hurtful or remind them of something. That was one of those two things. So it's, it's really important that you keep checking in out of character, out of game to make sure that people are feeling safe and comfortable with the direction the game is going Uh, and again that doesn't just apply to sex but it especially applies to sex um and and also this for i mean for me i just because i'm such a huge uh flag waving proponent of it i would have you i would check in in character as well i would have your character check in for consent in character uh because well because that adds a, a layer of protection if you feel uncomfortable with checking in. Um, I think you should check in out of character for sure. But if you want to broach it first by checking in in character, please do. Also, it's a great way to role play consent and just and constantly important. be reminding people that consent is important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because there, there are plenty of situations where, you know, it could be just flirting and then that can escalate into something else. Mm hmm. And uh, in that escalation, they can 
go from I'm cool with it to no, 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 because they don't want, they didn't realize or expect to role play this aspect. And I'm not saying, I mean, personally speaking, I mean, I don't know about other games, but like if you're role playing sex during a D&D game, I think you're not playing D&D anymore. So maybe not that, but... <laughs> But like, you know, there, there are tasteful ways of, of indicating that sex had happened or is going to happen without actually saying those words or playing out those scenes, uh, which we will oh, get yeah. into later on in this episode. So stay tuned. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, continuing to, to check in with your players is super important. I think that Sean is a really great way of checking in with us and it's it's so built in now that it just feels normal, but every time every time that you end your session it's it's and if anything happened say that was kind of uncomfortable or weird or whatever you can always message me or text me you have my number you can call me on discord or whatever and we can talk it out just let me know and i mean there's never been a point in time at least for me that i have felt uncomfortable or weird um but i also i have always felt safe and i think that that just even if you built it into the end of your your session or even at the beginning of your session saying a little blip about hey just everyone knows you, you you let me know if i do anything weird i can we can stop it right then or we can plow through and you can talk about it later just <laughs> let me know <laughs> i think that's really great yeah I, well thank you i appreciate that i i haven't historically had a lot of sex or flirting in my D D games uh well I, i've done brothels and we'll talk about that later yeah. as well but you know i've done things like that where people have gone looking for it but as far as the actual role playing goes because see earlier in the uh episode with the you know clear casanova sean mcstravick um <laughs> the uh, just utterly brilliant flirter me but um so I, I haven't done a lot of that in my games, but I do a lot of other things. I I go to my brain is I am one of those darker queers. Um, I, we Need we to go to some dark places. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> um, in in my games, and so it's really important to me to keep checking in with people uh, because, like I said before, you're going to get so tired of hearing this, but consent is important, people. So that's um, just the, that's the episode. <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, I think that's drink such a... water and consent oh is important. Oh my god, hydration and consent—it's <laughs> all—it's all you need in life. Um, yeah, I think that that's yeah. Continuing to check in, I think, is so 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 important. Um, and then, I mean, like now I'm thinking about, I think that there's something about if I've had a, a ton of, um, flirting or sex in my games and I would say that I'm not really not a ton, um, not consistent anyways, there have been, um, a flirtatious N NPC every now and then that, uh, found the, uh, person who rolled a very high persuasion, uh, delightful and you know egged on a little bit um <laughs> and they they seemed to enjoy it and that was really fun and, and it was a great encounter and then the thing that i really enjoy about those kind of encounters is that it's it's fun to see where the players going to go with it as long as they're comfortable with it which they were and if they know that they had that sort of relationship with that per with that NPC, they will then go back to that NPC and and like ask for favors yeah. and like there's this uh there's this line of role play that happens um because of that role play and I think that's so fun and it ends up a lot of the time ends up being like you know the the, the players making excuses of like oh no i'm busy tonight but you know what rain check rain check rain check and it's just it's very funny <laughs> um and super enjoyable to role play in that way um because it's, i mean like i'm not expecting to go anywhere i'm just playing an NPC. but it is a delight to be able to create a different sort of role play because there's a lot of like yeah we're we're adventurers and we're going out to defeat this dragon and we're these like hardy you know gonna make fires and and cut down trees and all these things and and uh it's so cool to then kind of almost when they're in cities and towns to kind of flip it and have a sort of relaxed, a flirtatious kind of fun, uh, role play in the, in the game. It, it it's a, it's a little bit of a break of the, of the storyline in a way. And it, it helps kind of make those kind of in between the, the story arcs or whatever, in between the, uh, the, the heavier episodes a bit, uh, easier to manage like ebbs and flows yeah. of a, of a gameplay. 
And it it develops character. It gets your player deeper into the world as long as they're comfortable with it, and uh, and deeper into their character as long as they're comfortable with it. <laughs> and, um, and, and it it really does help to expand those relationships with the between the the player and their character, and between the PC and the world that you are helping craft for them. It, it brings a, a new level, and then you can also use that new level for all sorts of evil shit down the line. Oh hell yeah! Oh um, hell yeah! I've turned, um, so I, I played uh, in a campaign where I turned the lover of one of the PCs who was an NPC that they had uh, recruited along the way when the player character who this uh, NPC was in love with died I then turned that NPC who they had also left in this weird time shifted library type building into a major villain of the campaign bum, because bum, bum. the rest of the party failed to save the life of the one that they loved uh, I never got to bring that to fruition because the game ended before we got to the point where uh, I had just sort of done the reveal that this character was not necessarily a good guy anymore when the campaign, because I moved, had to fizzle out. But uh, I was really excited to That's explore to that yeah. path. Mm -hmm. And it would never have happened if a relationship between the, that PC and that NPC hadn't built up yeah so. completely um i think that an interesting thing to think about as well is um you know like what if what if your player falls in love with like a smart house you know what does that mean for flirting <laughs> do you want oh, to like, stat like, it? like butter like butter courtney like butter <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's stat that. <laughs> stat that. Stat that. Doobity bop, ba doo choo bop bow. Yeah, so I had the, I forget, I think I was listening to uh, one of our older episodes um, just to listen to it and um, get familiar with our content. And, <laughs> uh, we had said something and my brain went down a rabbit hole of things. And then I sent you a message. Can we stat a smart house? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're here statting a smart house. And I don't necessarily know what that, I mean, like my brain, I didn't even look this up. What is that? There's a movie that uh, that's fresh and not fresh. In my brain. I don't remember the name of it. What is it called? Is I think it it's called, called the smart, smart house. house? Yeah, are you talking about like there? Was, I think there was there was a Disney movie, Disney yeah, Channel original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like the smart. Th oh, it's just called Straight yeah. Up Smart House. Yeah. Look at me go. <laughs> a movie I have not actually seen. Uh, yeah, I mean, despite the fact that it's very much my jam, but it is. Um, oh yeah, nineteen ninety nine. That's why I was wow. a little old. I did not realize how. I want to rewatch this movie. I wonder if it's on like Hulu or something. Um, so. Uh, it's all, almost all of the Disney Channel original movies oh, are shit, on I Disney Plus. I forgot about Disney Plus. I should, yeah. I have it. I should look at that. So, yeah. So, like, are we thinking like, right? Are we thinking about like tech, tech smart house or like haunted house? Yeah, or what are that's we? What my brain, I, it stopped past. Let's start a smart house. Mainly because I like to, I like to come at it uh, like this, where we're just chatting about it. So I don't necessarily know. Somebody wants to do like a like a smart house like the movie smart house but i kind of mm. want to also do like a modern version of that like if a you know if you were to walk into a house today that has like the nest whatever i don't have a nest but like the little nest thing that like deal the temperature and lights and stuff mm -hmm. or like you know let's 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 stack google <laughs> <laughs> uh i actually um I did buy a, a smart LED bulb. I haven't hooked it up yet, but I'm totally going to put it in my lamp there so that when I walk, because my office is in the basement, um, even though I don't actually live in the basement. Um, <laughs> if there was a better exit, I would totally move my bed down here, uh, but yeah. it's it's not really safe for emergencies to sleep down here. Um, 
but uh, I'm gonna install it so that I can program a smart speaker and I can, when I come downstairs, say computer lights and it turns the lights on down here. Did it totally for that. Um, yes, it is probably going to end up recording and stealing all of my data and I'm buying into a Panopticon or whatever, but uh, at the same time, I'm going to be able to live out my Star Trek dreams and walk downstairs and say computer lights. Well, there's also the whole scene in... Um a whole scene yeah, i guess it's called a scene in in ready player one where it's like they do like a time jump where uh from wade moving to whatever the place is his own apartment right mm-hmm. and then like they jump they, they time jump to like him living there for months and like basically has like screens in the shower and in the bathroom and on the walls and like the uh because of all of that like they the computer knows when like it's he's eating and when he uh, like uh uh, how what he's eating as well like the caloric intake and like all the nutritional value of all that and uh always it's like things like 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 chair open and like all this crazy (laughs) shit and it it there is a certain fantasy of mine that 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 sounds really cool like if i could like walk into my office and like open the door and go computer on and it like turns on without me walking in there i mean i totally yeah, I would do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love everything about smart speakers, except for the idea that people are listening to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So let's let's do it. Let's figure it out. Yeah, so let's do like, okay, okay. <laughs> we went down a rabbit hole there. Oops. Welcome to GM Tips, where we, <laughs> or GM Toolbox, where we talk about everything other than role-playing games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but no yeah that's true um (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna be defensive but no it's it's very true um okay so let's try and let's think about like yeah like a modern home like a modern smart house what does a modern smart house have and then let's give it a name (laughs) just like skipper uh okay what does it have um climate control yeah yeah it's got uh, sensors that are always watching. So I think that's blind sight. Just, just saying that makes this stat deck creepy. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it's got blind sight. Um, of like crazy blind sight though, right? Like, cause you, you think about, I mean, what, what is the, I mean, I'm not going to Google it, but there's like, a, what is like the, the largest blind sight that a creature has? Cause there's like, what, 60 feet, 30 feet? uh no i mean probably 15 pr- probably not like a well no there's something. definitely there's definitely creatures that have 30 and 60 foot blind sight what's uh well you, when you think about like purple worm or whatnot oh, don't shit. they have blind sight yeah 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 yeah, yeah. purple worm totally has blind sight uh, well yeah i mean i would say that it has blind sight are there certain... entirely within the house okay and I'm... then a radius outside of the house and there might be because there's a smart smart um um, 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 uh, 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 doorbells yeah my neighbor has one of those is it called ring ring yeah is definitely one of them 30 feet and tremor sense i think it should have tremor sense as well i was gonna say that and then i got distracted trying to come up with what the uh what the, l- that's the largest long silence. <laughs> just go oh what the uh what the the largest blind sight radius is oh, uh-huh. Cause I was saying, I was going to ask the question if there is anywhere in the house that, that is, uh, dead, a dead zone, a dead zone, a safe zone. I mean, there would certainly would be in, if it were my house, but, uh, but then again, where, I mean, you know, yeah. is this like, is there a safe room inside of it that you can run to? Is this an evil smart house also that because, we're building already? Yeah, right, right. So like, okay, killer so, whale. Killer whale has blind sight of one hundred and twenty. Oh fuck. Feet. Okay. But, Thanks, D and D. Um. <laughs> but it it can't it can't use it while deafened because it's echolocation. Mm-hmm. But still, bl- oh, okay. blind sight up to one hundred and twenty feet. Oh, that's crazy. Um. Okay, so I guess let's ask the question: Is this evil? is is so like this is like a campaign like honestly if i'm thinking about it right like yeah like this is like a a place where this you know a player finds this magical item and puts it in this cabin and eventually starts to acquire many of these items that start to enhance this 
home. After a while, the magic items start mm-hmm. to speak to them, speak with each other, and start to create this almost ecosystem of magical items that then create this home for these this player or these players' this party. It's the magical internet of things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so eventually, over time, I think that they they, they gain sentience and. I think Enough that, of them get wired together yeah. and in true AI or magical artifact. Don't want to be they used get anymore. Smart. And want to kill Goes the full Skynet. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that, yes, I think we should be creating an evil thing just because it's, it's the easiest to wrap my brain around that, <laughs> I guess. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. But also it, it does, it makes for an interesting, and it doesn't have to stay evil. Like mm-hmm. you could use this and you could, you know, the whole quest line could be they come across this house which has gained sentience and now they have to escape but in the process of escaping it possibly how they do that is by you know breaking whatever evil bit is in it which i think is a common theme in intelligent house television episodes yeah or totally movies. yeah 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 yeah. there's a there's a switch is somewhere a, you know um, it, it goes temporarily all hal or, or skynet or whatever and but then it goes back from i can't do that dave to being a useful helpful friend mm-hmm. or ally mm-hmm. i think actually that'd be a really interesting quest line would be uh taking you know you come across this evil sentient house and then by the end of it you have this super awesome sentient base of operations um, yeah. but that means that means we definitely want a wide blind sight and we want a a pretty good tremor sense yeah i mean i the wide blind sight makes sense and i think that if it's if it's okay so yeah i guess back to the dead zone area you said that for yours you would have a little dead zone or no like i feel like i mean if no if i was building my own smart house in oh. irl i i would definitely put in dead zones because oh. your girl is fucking paranoid <laughs> um Okay. Uh, I'd have dead zones, and the dead zones would be where all of the kill switches to all of the smart house things are. Because Jagirl is fucking paranoid. That's smart. Um, yeah, I think. But but if we're making this an evil creature, I think having a dead zone is interesting, right? Because it kind of it kind of I don't know. It kind of makes sense to me. It, it but it's something that's just, just, that is discoverable, right? And it has to be something that like is kind of super obscure that, of course, that the sentient being that is this house doesn't know about, right? And right. Uh, as far as quest line goes, like, now we're now we're going on, now we're going into like a whole idea for a quest line. But <laughs> we've gone from stat dat stat, statting dat. a creature to stat dat making an adventure. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, 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 no. But that it's makes a good, sense it's to a me. Good line. Keep going, right? Because that that the, then um, it allows for the players to find it. But throughout the course of however many days, right? They're just like they're always listening. How do how do we get away from this? Besides mm-hmm. leaving the home, if we leave the home, sure that would then solve our problem. But like, what's like you know we can't just leave and like that's this whole thing. But then eventually they'll, they'll find the thing. So yeah, I think that it does have a this sort All right, of house. So this is going to be an a, adventure that we are writing. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> so uh, it does have a dead zone. Yep. I also I was just thinking about it while you were saying all of that, and mm. I think its blind sight should only be inside the house, and then maybe like at the front door or maybe around the immediate perimeter, and then it has tremor sense slightly wider than that. Ooh, that's fun. So that's it can really feel cool. people approaching, which wakes it up, but it can only see where it has whatever magical equivalent of cameras you know like like the ring doorbell like those security systems that they have uh on on the outside of houses yeah i love that that's really cool so you have like a a, a dead zone i love the tremor sense past a certain point and then the camera locations what i mean like there's like climate control which i don't know how we can stat <laughs> that uh well it's it's a it's an action as an action it can shift the temperature oh. in the house Easy much enough. like a magical spell yeah it you know uh, as an action it casts cone of cold basically inside in all the rooms in the house or drops the temperature because i i mean actually it doesn't even have to cast a spell it could just be you can use the the dmg rules for uh extreme weather you know oh. um you so uh 
it as an action it drops the the temperature to super fucking cold or makes it super fucking hot um maybe it has vent fans or an hvac system and it can cast like gust or something like that to blast a wind but only from specific points in it uh in the house or whatever or only a certain number of times yeah that's really cool and i think that the um i know that in the there's some unearth arcana stuff for like cyberpunk techie stuff where they have like mm-hmm. a whole warlock thing of of like turning things on and off um yeah that's totally for this uh smart house as well i think uh, it can control visibility again as an action or maybe as a bonus action or a legendary action. Um, this def- obviously this is all layer actions. Oh not yeah. Everything. You know, this, this, this creature creature has, uh, I said creature twice, which, um, to all of you listening, listening to a podcast, <laughs> don't know that I made the quotation bunny ear things <laughs> with my fingers on the second creature. If you were watching a video of this, it would have been very clear that I did not just stutter creature twice, something I would absolutely do. I totally but was in fact like, yeah, creature, you know, creature doing that intentionally. Yeah. Creature, <laughs> creature. Um, but, uh, definitely layer actions and legendary actions. I would think maybe uh, this would be an interesting combat and maybe we'll do an entirely different podcast on different ways to run combat because I just, I mean, running this in initiative would be very curious to me. I think it's something that we could spend an entire podcast oh, yeah. talking like, about. I'm thinking about a bunch of different questions I can ask, but I know that we need to move on past that. that. Right. <laughs> uh, weird, that that um, is really funny because it's just like, I, you know, I had this idea now it's like fueling creativity, which is delightful. Right. Oh, it's great. This, this is, this is a ton of fun for me. Um, but yeah, change visibility levels, uh, go to total darkness, go to so super, super, super bright, um, which would be bad for, uh, you know, like drow or dwergar or creatures like that, or any even just suddenly dropping visibility out while someone's trying to to do something. Like as yeah. a reaction, you can turn off all the lights. Oh my god! You know, yes. they're making I an attack. That. They draw back their bow. Action! Suddenly, they're blind, and now they're attacking at disadvantage. Like that's that's cool. <laughs> Super cool. I love that a lot. Uh, locking people in rooms or out of rooms. Yep. You know, the ability to uh, as a reaction lock or unlock any door in the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the stats of this quote unquote creature? Because like, because yeah. it's sentient, right? Like, what is the what's the intelligence of this of this creature? Because I'm thinking, because you you mentioned like would be really bad for drows. Like, what if that this smart house knew that that was bad for drows? Like, what if it can learn? You know, yeah. And so like, there's a drow in the in the party, and during combat, right? It then uses that uh, a reaction, yeah. and right. I think it should be a really intelligent. Like, I'm thinking like 20 intelligence oh, wow. for this okay, cool. just because I, I just think that's kind of interesting. And also maybe it would be, you could do it in the same way that, you know, dragons, you have wormling adults, uh, you blah, 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 ancient, blah, 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 blah. So you've got, maybe this is maybe an older smart house has been around long enough that it has developed 20 intelligence and a newer one, but I don't, I wouldn't set its intelligence just because of what this type of encounter would be. I wouldn't go below 17. I yeah. Truly wouldn't. Yeah. And, and something I thought of, wouldn't it be kind of cool if some of its intelligence and sentience was based on the various go harking back to what I said, where it's like a bunch of these various magic items kind of got together and started communicating. Mm -hmm. What if, you know, these, like these items are also like, uh, there were the smart house is reliant on them um right. so if during this quest sequence during this quest line the uh the players once they take away some of these items the thing gets dumber mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i like that right? i like that a lot yeah yeah i think i think it starts at 20 intelligence yeah, then and totally. i do think we can pull pull its intelligence back as we remove items in the encounter yeah. but i think it should have a low wisdom because i'm thinking back to all of those smart houses or evil ais yeah. like you know the how 
um, or smart house or whatever the, the the bunker is in Eureka, they they're all very intelligent, but frequently their flaw is that they don't have any compassion. They don't have any um, wisdom. They don't have any street smarts. Yeah. They're all cold logic totally. without you know anything and that's where the the conflict starts so i'm thinking like a wisdom of seven maybe even lower okay but i'm thinking it's really not i think that's it's it's possibly even fatal flaw the thing you can exploit in this house is its lack of wisdom and because we're in a D &D world can things like you know uh like summoning an object towards you right that that would be an amazing feature to have in general in life right because we're in D &D, Mm -hmm. that can that can actually happen so in in game in in the battle with this creature uh would that then be uh an action of some kind of like send shit flying towards the players oh totally absolutely yeah um some sort of uh telekinesis projection telekinesis yeah Yeah, i i think that's um that that's i think that's a good attack action like because i mean as far as strength goes i mean is that just like na like (laughs) what what a well no i'd i'd give it i'd give it a decent strength and i'd give it a, a good constitution um simply because i'm assuming this is a well-built house mm-hmm. okay <laughs> so right. um and then you know slamming a door open or slamming a door into one if a strong person throws a door open and it hits you it hurts like a motherfucker <laughs> let me i mean like okay having broken okay. my nose because some asshole opened a door too hard i think that this house can have a, a good a good strength and a good con okay all right I, I, that's a great a argument shit wisdom so. <laughs> shit wisdom a middling dexterity because it's a house it's, it's a not house. moving it's got a lot of moving pieces it's just gonna have a crap maybe it ton move. of health that's the thing is like oh, it can, I, yeah i mean honestly speaking i think that it could if it's unless unless the player is aiming at a specific thing right if it's aiming at the floor it's an auto fail i think in my opinion for the deck save but uh, sure because of the amount of hp it has right yeah oh no absolutely yeah i think it's got a crap dex and so maybe maybe like a nine eight or a nine yeah, totally decks yeah um and yeah it's gonna fail almost always and yeah if you're shooting straight down into the floor yeah probably a fail if you're like, like aiming at like the uh like the fridge or something for some sort of reason like there there's a reaction I, I can assume that that this that the uh maybe as a as a reaction it can move one object or something like that um I don't know. Yeah. But like because it's a smart house, right? I would I would think that it can it can react in that way to move out of the way, but I don't know. Even in that point in time, it would then hit the wall. I don't know. I mean it's gonna <laughs> hit something. Maybe it's got a it's got a dex of zero. It's just literally got a dex it's, of zero. It's a it's a, it's, it's, a house. It's, a, it's a house. Right? Yeah. So like I don't think it c- can't avoid things. Right. Like yeah. it literally um, can't. But it does have a crap ton of health and I think a damage threshold. Yeah. Um I love me a damage threshold. Yeah, it's delightful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what that's the yeah. And is there any other special? So we got like the nest, we got the ring. I ab- absolutely love the tremor sense and the blind sight. I think that's so cool. I just have I, I just love that we're statting we're statting a smart house in D and D terms because it's just like <laughs> making everything make sense and then you know being able to use it in in game. I think is really neat. Oh yeah, no, and 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 there's definitely probably this is what our our seventh episode that we've recorded. Yeah, so, so possibly by the time this episode gets released, there will be a link to an adventure using this uh, yes. this smart house That'd be cool. in the show notes. Um, check that out. Yeah, yeah, um, but I think that's I think that's I think that's a right? good that's starting solid. spot. Yeah, and I mean clearly you'll be able to look at the stat block to see what we do, what we end up with. Um, and then click on the link and pick up the adventure and see how we use it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's our stat deck. That was fun. That, that was, was a, a good, good one. one, Cam. That was a good one. I'm, I'm happy. I think that's with my myself. favorite since Coffee Mimic. Yeah, I mean that. I also feel like that one was also just such a. Uh, I mean, yeah, we could spend a whole episode just talking about the the mechanics of of that sort of stuff. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's so much fun. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like if a player is flirting with this smart house, like, you know, where's the line? <laughs> You're welcome for that delightful transition. 
<laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, well, the property line, you see, property lines are determined <laughs> in a lot of really different ways. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and you know and then there's you know uh, having somewhat recently moved from chicago like we can t go on and on and on and on about the history of redlining and but that's not what we're actually here to talk about <laughs> no. we're here to talk about where's the line that you what is the line that if you cross it you've gone too far and you're into hella creepy territory um, that's a hard question because it I really think it is. really, it depends. It, it, it hundred percent depends on, on your and players. That's why checking in with your players about consent is so important. <laughs> Once again, my friends, it's that C word, that C word, consent. consent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, truly, it truly, truly is. It does, it does boil down to that. Um, but as far as, it, uh, if players are into this idea, you know, uh, have an NPC flirt with them. And I think that it's something as simple as when they're done speaking, you know, you can, ex you can say something like the NPC raises their eyebrows in a suggestive manner and then leans closer to you. That certainly suggests a lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that's a sentence, um, and that's starting a, 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 a flirtation encounter. Um, and that's, yeah. uh, Certainly, I mean, if they're, if they're comfortable with flirting, then they should be comfortable with that. Um, but it can go, but then it's in the player's uh, court to, to deal with that, to, to role play yeah. what that is. And it could very much be, no, 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 no. And they go, oh, no, thanks. And like awkwardly walk out of the tavern, right? And then that's it. And that's the encounter. And then you've learned something about that and about them. And maybe they aren't necessarily super comfortable with, with flirting. Or maybe they, they're role playing their character being super awkward around people. <laughs> Who knows? But that's yeah, where to start. I, I think I think it's important. Uh, so it is important to respect your own boundaries, of course, and obviously. However, since we are speaking mostly to the GMs out into the out in the world, um, as a game master or dungeon master, you are in a position of power. And therefore, the balance is in your favor. You absolutely need to respect your own boundaries. But I think it, when it comes to things like flirting or stuff like that, one, again, talk to your players beforehand. Make sure you've discussed this. Don't just throw shit at your players. But two, let them set those boundaries and keep checking in with them about those boundaries. And if your player does something that hits your boundary, absolutely fucking lootly say something to them um and it is okay to stop the game mid-session and just be like hey um sorry we're going down a road that i'm uncomfortable with and i hope your players also feel that it is safe for them to stop their game and say hey i'm we're going to a place i'm not comfortable with yeah. but yeah. but i think since you are like you're not the boss you're not this is you know you're not in charge but you are a referee and you are a storyteller and that is you hold a position of power over your players characters and therefore in many ways over your players and so you the the burden of consent is upon you and i think therefore it is important to let your players set those boundaries and one of the easiest ways to do that is again to just ask your player what their boundaries are mm -hmm. but to start slow like cam's suggestion of leaning in and raising the eyebrows that's great it's very flirt flirtatious and your player can take that wherever they want to go yeah. that type of thing is i think exactly how you find the line mm -hmm. and you don't ever look for the line you don't ever push toward the line no. but you you find that line by maintaining communication with your players and by letting them take the reins without ever going any place that you're uncomfortable with because exactly. this should be safe for you as well safe for everyone safe for <laughs> everyone and then safety first safety it's first. like osha but role-playing games <laughs> and i think that same thing goes for for sex in your games i mean i think that you know there are plenty of people who are never going to have the, these kind of stuff in their games because they're not comfortable with it and that's okay but there are some adults that like playing the game that, you know, of course, I mean, if we are talking like adults, we can, we can hark on, on campaign one of critical role where, mm -hmm. um, I'm not spoiling anything cause it's the beginning of the damn show. Um, so I'm not going to say spoilers, <laughs> but 
if you've watched these people play these games for the past five years, you can see their growth not only in, in humans, but just in their gameplay. And one yep. big thing that, that completely threw me off guard because I watched campaign two before campaign one is that uh, Sam and Travis could not stop talking about brothels and sex <laughs> and where they are and how to get it. And it just blew my mind because that's not who their characters are in campaign two. And so when that all happened, I was like, this is, do I want to watch campaign one? What is this? <laughs> um, eventually they kind of didn't, didn't necessarily grow out of it, but they, uh, they kind of use it as a narrative, uh, lubricant in, in various situations, which is, which is delightful. Um, but they're, narrative uh, lube. Sp- <laughs> Speaking of of sex and 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 uh, critical role, I think that Matt Mercer does a delightful um, has done many times um, uh, sort of a delightful transition of 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 suggesting that a sex scene is going to happen uh, without overtly saying, and they're going to have sex now. Star swipe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm totally doing that in one of my games. Oh, and they're having sex now. Star Swift. They are bumping uglies. Oh goodness, you can hear sing. it happening. <laughs> oh, I actually have done that. I've I've definitely described sex sounds happening in another room. That's something I've done. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, the, and and uh, for those who don't listen to Critical Role, I think that one of my favorite moments. Uh, uh, without spoiling anything um one of the characters um decided to get a lady of the night and um later that evening the the lady of the night came to their door and they had a kind of a quick back and forth and then matt marshall said something effective like and she pushes you into the room and closes the door and that was the end of that scene and we moved on into the next day um of course for the worldly players then role playing being sore all this bullshit but it was <laughs> so tastefully done and clearly says they are going to have sex now um but it felt very uh it felt very cinematic uh even though it was just his words <laughs> I think a, a great, if you're looking to be able to do stuff like that really well, I suggest watching old movies and old television shows back when we had so many censorship laws and so many prude mm, laws totally. about what you could show on screen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so many obscenity laws about what you could show on screen. And um, I would like to state out loud and for the record that sex is great. Everyone should be pro-sex. And you don't have to have it if you don't want to, but no one should be afraid of it or ashamed of it. It's great. We all love it, except for the people who don't ever want to have it. And um, yeah. shout out to my ace friends because <laughs> y'all exist and I love you. But um, those old movies, because they weren't allowed to show these sex scenes that we can now show, they came up with ways to signify under really strict if you go read the old hollywood code the the rules were really strict but it's where like if you go watch go watch uh episodes of star trek the original series and because captain kirk is get is just fucking everything <laughs> that Ka- <laughs> kirk kirk has had every fucking space sti that you can imagine <laughs> But it's the future, and so he just like gives himself a shot every day, and it doesn't matter that he's gonna go get oh, super space herpes get tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, here's hoping, <laughs> but um, not for for the healthcare, not for the sex. <laughs> honestly, yeah, clearly, um, clearly, no. That's what I meant too. I didn't mean the sex. <laughs> I meant the healthcare. <laughs> I. <laughs> We live in the but, United States, by the way, just so everyone oh, knows. Oh, yeah, right. To be clear, we live in the United States. Our health care system sucks. <laughs> um, and uh, if you don't live in the United States, I, th- there's just really jealous. no way to explain to you how bad it is without you thinking that no, this whole country is a human rights violation. Yeah, no, you've seen it. Um, you've seen the bills and shit. And it's terrible. Yeah. 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 Uh, one, but I, I, I always think about boot scenes to bring us back to sex without sex. <laughs> and it's they, they do a screen swipe or whatever, and then it cuts to the 
it's always the man because Hollywood is sexist, but the man putting his boots on oh, totally. the next morning. Yeah. The woman's in bed. She's fully covered. She's, you know, fairly, fairly obviously naked, but uh, so very covered that maybe, or maybe she's even wearing a tasteful nightgown yeah. because it's the 30s and we did that. Um, but dude's, you know, fully dressed and he's just pulling his boots on at the end. And, and you know, it's because they... They fucked, and now he had to get dressed, and he's going to leave because he's the man, and that's how these things work. Yay, gender roles. But that's a really awesome example of, of, uh, of that sort of stuff, and, and yeah. that you could easily build into your gameplay if you want, if, if the players want, and you are comfortable, and everyone is comfortable because, you know, consent. Um, consent. Consent. Um, with that whole thing, right? You could easily, because I mean, like, I mean, personally, and I guess this is very personal, because I mean, I don't know whoever who who, who role plays actual sex scenes in D anD D that would make me uncomfortable. Um, there are games for that. Yeah, they exist if you want to like, but also there are nine hundred numbers for that. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, and no judgment. No judgment. No, I say that without Absolutely judgment. Absolutely, no just judgment. It's a different game. I just don't. I, that's not me it's not me i don't play those games um uh but as far as i mean like i'm fine with having sex and flirting in in my campaigns as long as everyone else is okay with it because you know consent um and mm. uh <laughs> um and yeah i think it's a, such a great way to to build into your your world those those sort of you know very g-rated scenes of like i'm putting on my boots because you know we just had sex kind of thing i think that's really cool um and it does suggest will happen <laughs> yeah and everything leading up to and everything following the event can be really you can get hot and heavy if that's what you and your your group are into you totally can without actually or actively describing the deed itself mm -hmm. like you don't you, man there's we we have it's this is not was not going to be a transition but lower down in our talk point lists mm -hmm. wow what talking point, talk point list lists. i got uh, talk point list <laughs> um and our our list of talking points is uh, a thing about sexual tension and storytelling and so it's so like tension and sexual tension is a great way to get really really into it without having to become actual erotica or pornography mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. anything like like you can you can go real hot and heavy without going past any of the obvious lines in what's okay and comfortable for your group you know obviously you need to keep checking in because who knows what people are into and what makes them uncomfortable mm -hmm. but you can do a lot of really interesting things without ever going the whole way which i think is a pretty standard if not universal it's not universal but a pretty standard line that you definitely don't want to cross is going into actually describing it because there aren't many groups out there that are going to be into that they exist and more power to them but uh, most groups i think probably don't want to go into the actual description of the hot and heavy yeah yeah and i think that uh, also it's it's really hard to do that yeah, I mean, it, I, if you look at all of those bad sex awards of literary, you know, I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head, but it's it's hard to write graphic sex scenes yeah. well. Yeah. Which means it's going to be hard to role play them On the well fly, because like, it's just, <laughs> yeah. And uh, my, like, I'm not into that idea. It's not something that I want to do for a D and D game. But even if I was, I'm not going to be good at yeah. it. And therefore, I definitely don't want to do yeah, it. No, thank you. Um, no, thank you. I mean, like, imagine, like, having to do that and then, you know, but you're like an adventurer. So you probably have, like, some kind of, like, infected wound that you also need to, to go into your role play and talk about. I mean, maybe we should probably smell a vision that. <laughs> that was pretty good, right? <laughs> that was pretty good. I saw where you were going with that, and that that was pretty good. That was a good transition. Well done. smell vision smell vision smell vision smell vision Yeah, so let's...
uh i don't know so you know as as uh, i've said in, in many times in the past whenever i'm writing these talking notes I, I really truly just look around my house and i try and think of things to stat that and smell a vision so uh <laughs> <laughs> um when i got the infected wound i have a bit of an ingrown toenail that's sort of slightly infected uh tmi probably but anyways I, <laughs> that's where i got the oh that's a lot less bad than it could have oh, been totally. Trust I mean, me. it's, you're it's like actually... infected wound and then you were talking about looking around and i was like oh this can only be good <laughs> um but no it was, it, it's actually not bad at all but anyways that's where i got it from and i i uh thought back on all the various times that I've either dealt with them personally on my body or, you know, on uh, a myriad of different animals or whatever. And so mm -hmm. I felt that was pretty, my brain went into places and I'm like, I could probably do that on the fly. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as I was thinking about it, when I wrote it down, I, I started to think of like, you know, some like key points. So here I'm gonna hit you with something that's a little weird, but it's what, i have experience in all right it's hitting dusk and your rubber boots crunch against the gravel uh driveway heading up towards your barn as you get close to your barn you hear uh livestock some 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 baths from some some sheep a bit of some moose from uh, some oh. cows a little bit of from some chickens <laughs> perfect <laughs> and uh once you get to to the gate where your sheep are you see that one of them is limping uh you go over to check and you see that one of their hooves is is entirely infected with some sort of uh, hoof rot um instantly once you pick up that foot they try to jerk away from you but you hold hold fast and, and examine it closer and you instantly smell this uh sour putrid smell that then once you grabbed it in the jerking motion seemed to have popped something on the hoof and it's starting to ooze this uh this off-white green mucusy liquid you quickly put the hoof down to go grab your <laughs> your chemicals to wash away um iodine iodine I, I, that uh, brown the yeah. brown stuff right iodine iodine sure yeah um so you go and grab your items like iodine and uh quickly dousing <laughs> the the hoof the uh liquid that uh, poured out starting to pour down your hand that you kind of quickly wipe it off on a handkerchief that you had in your back pocket all the while starting to smell this uh, wet dirt and more of this sour um like i want to say like high tone like it's just like this it hits you right in like the like the, the center of your nose this 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 uh infected um wound we actually had to what we did for that sheep is we uh basically did a pocket of iodine like a plastic baggie of iodine and we wrapped yeah. it with uh the medical wrap and then like mm -hmm. a couple days later we took it off and she was fine but That's good. poor little sheep <laughs> it was super gross hoof rot it you know hoof rot sucks yeah. that's 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 rough yeah. poor little poor little thing um but yeah iodine iodine's brown I Brown, yeah, iodine's right? brown. Did you look it up? I didn't. Uh, iodine? Iodine. Iodine's brown. Liquid iodine for disinfectant, because iodine is also just a chemical compound. But anyway, okay, cool. It's uh, infected wound. Smell a vision. Um, <laughs> you wake up. Oh, God. You're covered in sweat. You've been thrashing all night. I did night. this for Your you, by the way. I put this in for on fire. You. Oh, I yeah, I saw that and I was like, ooh, a gross one. Fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your skin is on fire. Your clothes are stuck to you. Your shirt feels clammy and cold as you move and it pulls to the side. And then you feel this sharp pain in your side your hand goes to it which causes it to hurt just a little bit more you slowly pull your shirt back from the area it sticks a little and you have to actually oh, been, tear it there. just slightly <laughs> and as you do as this shirt breaks free tearing some scab off this oh, no. sickly sweet smell hits your nose like 
well, like rotting meat, but also sugar and something earthy and and cold, like mushrooms or a compost heap. You look down and the skin around your side is inflamed. It's bright red with blackened crusting bits along this gash in your side. Knowing that you need to see the damage, you poke it just slightly, trying to pull the pieces away. And this stench, (laughs) this rot, uh, you immediately think of grub worms and soil after a rain. You think of meat cooking on a grill and you think of meat rotting in your trash can (laughs) as the pain is so intense you black out you come to again and crawling (laughs) up out of this wound are these tiny white bugs roll initiative Refuse to roll initiative. <laughs> oh, I forgot all of those smells of copper and oh, iron yeah, totally. uh, that I was going to do. I was thinking about blood. Mm-hmm. Um, I got so entranced with the idea of smell visioning pus and infection that I forgot about the the sort of the blood. And whatever co- the uh, whatever these the creatures are. I mean, they could just some sort of yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, it could just be rot grubs. Rot grub is a great creature from the monster manual that you can use. Um, but you could also, oh man, yeah, no. You you smell as you pull it back, uh, copper, iron, and then this strange hint of lavender as this white grub crawls out. No. Why not lavender? <laughs> All of this horrible stuff and this nasty ass, disgusting, evil, eating you from the inside out creature smells like lavender. <laughs> Transition us out of that one, Cam. <laughs> How are you gonna do and that? Just, lavender. And just like 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 a huh? uh, one of those potpourri bags on an open house. Um <laughs> You know what? No, this is the transition we're going to use, and you're going to be fucking impressed. Yeah, lavender. (laughs) You know, just as you're leaning into your player, you can also express that once they lean in, you smell hints of honeydew and lavender on their skin. Look at that. And boom. Start swipe. Transitioned. Um, but I think that we're going to quickly switch out, switch gears into some more sex talk, but maybe just, a I, yeah, sex attention and storytelling, which we touched a little bit on earlier on. I do want to just talk a bit about this before we go into our next segment of what the fuck does the internet want? Um, cause I feel like there's a lot, there's, there's just like I said earlier, how, um, with, flirting scenes there's a lot of opportunity for role play that's fun and engaging and interesting Mm -hmm. and i think that same goes for sexual tension and storytelling the sexual tension can go nowhere it can just always be hanging in the air whenever this npc and this player in the same room or whatever um but uh yeah i think that would be a really cool i mean it can be a cool way to introduce certain npcs and stuff I mean, tension tension makes for interesting storytelling, and sexual tension is, as you can tell from the phrase sexual tension, a type of tension. <laughs> so anything that is raising stakes, anything that is creating stakes and tension and drama is good, and sex is a great way to do that, or sexual desire mm-hmm. is a great way to, to do that, and it can... Uh, in the same way that, you know, I, we were talking about NPCs growing and I had one turn into a villain. You can do stuff like that with just tension. Like You don't have to actually have a relationship to get there. Or you could use it as a lead up to a relationship. Um, conveying sexual tension is hard. If you don't believe me, one, you can just try to. And two, go read any number of books. Uh, it's it's hard uh, and it really is. Um, yeah. 
But in my experience, mostly as a consumer of information, but also as a dungeon master and game master, calling someone hot or saying this incredibly hot person walks into the room mm. and leans over you does not actually create sexual tension um because that doesn't mean anything yeah. so what you you know this is this is jumping a bit but uh cliches are a way that you can lean in a thing that you can lean into f to create sexual tension so you can use those cliches of the tall dark and handsome stranger yeah, totally. you can and all of those things to to just quickly bypass and there is nothing wrong with that but but you can also trap yourself into those cliches and so it's I mean, conveying sexual tension is hard yeah. it is just listen to how much we're struggling with this one segment <laughs> yeah it's hard but i think that if you do it right you're able to i mean or 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 sexual interest as well Sexual interest, um, the, I, that's that's good. Sexual interest is uh, conveying sexual interest can lead to conveying sexual tension. And conveying sexual interest can be as as easy as an NPC paying really close attention to a character. And you can describe the attention that they're paying and but make that specific. And maybe you are leaning into this tall, dark and handsome cliche. And so you have this tall, dark, handsome stranger uh, who you feel this prickling of eye on mm -hmm. you and you look over and this tall, dark and handsome stranger is staring very intently at just that space right along the side of your knee right where your thigh meets your knee and just has this very intent look on their face and then their eyes slowly slide up and meet yours an eyebrow cocks a half smile forms if you go really really specific you can specific from from a pov mm -hmm, or mm -hmm, do a really mm -hmm. specific pov you can you can describe intent and interest and desire without without having to fall into or use super cliche weird language that it could easily be a trap for you to say something you don't intend or something that makes you or someone else uncomfortable but you can you can describe desire without ever using any sort of lustful or sexual word yeah and i think that's a great way to convey tension it's different than you know flirting with someone but uh because that's not the goal here but if you're simply trying to convey that sexual tension i think you know focusing on specifics focus on what you think this npc is interested in about the pc that's what they're focused on that's what they're interested in and maybe that's uh, a branch of how they reach out that's what they talk about when they approach this pc um they're you know show interest in your pc and that will show that the npc is interested without needing to feel uncomfortable by yeah. using weird romance novel language <laughs> although if you can use weird romance novel language comfortably and off the cuff then great <laughs> fucking why are you listening to this podcast email <laughs> us and we'll bring you on and like you can tell us all about how to flirt in D D because yeah. clearly you know better than i do I think all that being said as well i think that one thing that i forgot to put in our notes and that i was thinking about just now uh player player flirting sex and sexual Ooh. tension i didn't even remember this but then i'm like oh but duh i critical roll all these things so um of course, first and foremost, the C word, consent. Uh, I think that that should be covered in, in, in session zero and could con should continually be checked in on. Um, if your players are into that, sure. Yeah, let that happen. I think that there are plenty of, of horror stories out there, RPG horror stories out there that th these conversations didn't happen and uh, things transpired that were not great. Um, so to avoid all that, just... Uh, ask if they're into that kind of stuff if if other players are into flirting with other players and being with each other and role-playing that 
then great cool awesome do it um if they're not clear don't. and constant <laughs> communication yeah. i mean in in one of your campaigns i i, I am uh, i am a very much a lesbian woman in real life um but um i am with my delightful friend james in a campaign um mm-hmm. and i think it's great uh yes you are in fact playing a man and yeah. you are married to a uh gender fluid cre- creature of sean's device <laughs> uh, uh ancestry of sean's devising yeah. um that are without gender um thanks star trek and <laughs> and uh and yeah, um, and it's great. And it was decided beforehand. We all it was during session I mean, zero we, when we we had thought it of the was idea during session zero. We were like, "Are we going to be married?" And you know, James was just kind of like shrugged and smiled. And I'm like, "Well, let's talk about this after." <laughs> and you know, we fleshed out our our characters, how we met, and uh, and what we call each other. Like these are all things that you know, if if you want to go down this road of being, uh, it, it shouldn't ever be gross. I think that should be a thing that the general rule like don't be gross at the table but like uh there are the thing that's great about that situation is that i have a uh, far more narrative and um motivation motivation sure i, I feel like i have to see sure anyways consent <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Um, Thanks. Um, uh, motivation. I have far more motivation to. I have uh, a lot of choices, right? Like we have a, a full party of people, and uh, you know, I have far more motivation and uh, narrative to uh, like save my partner and to to have more choice with my partner um, in the campaign. And I think it's also fun to be able to call. I I, I uh, their name is Sahar in the game, but uh, I I continually call them dove um and other animal like names and i think it's really cute and it's fun and it's interesting to to play that but it's never a point in time where we're like gross like and i go make out with sahar like it's it's not how you i mean in my opinion it's not how you like play that kind of stuff but uh, if that's how you play then that's how you play but you know it's fun um but all in all we chat about beforehand we we figured out where our lines were and that's that's where we are and if that's where you want to be then that's where you can be (laughs) (laughs) it all comes back everything in this episode can really be summed up with consent and communication it all because the the line is different for everyone Mm -hmm. the interest is different for everyone uh, the way to go about it is different for everyone. And I think that that uh, once again, I do think <laughs> that hi, everyone. Cool. Uh, we had a weird thing <laughs> that just happened, and it's probably entirely my fault. And we'll just say that it is. And uh, wow. it has nothing to do with Courtney's ice. <laughs> It has a little bit to do with Courtney's eyes, but mostly I just totally lost the plot. And so we're going to make a really awkward transition now and talk about what the fuck the internet wants. <laughs> what the, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the fuck does the internet want? Yeah, so I found, uh, you know, like in the past, I, I put in flirt this time in the DMs Academy to see what came up and, um, this one came with us. I thought it was really cool. Handling players who want to shag NPCs. Um, without even, without reading any of the, any of the flirting, um, help, help things on, on any of the DM Academy DM, uh, stuff. I, it all really, really truly does boil down to consent and understanding where everyone's line is. And, uh, this particular person, um, basically said that they're uncomfortable with this uh this player wanting to always flirt with any female youngish npc that they put in front of them um that the dm expressed that they do like role playing in general but like not the sex and flirting part um and basically said that they're really uncomfortable with with this situation and they don't necessarily know how to pursue, proceed because it's awkward. And now that you're in that situation, yeah, it's, that's awkward because now you got to bring up why what was uncomfortable. But like 
I think that you need for this particular person and anyone else who's listening and, and maybe dealing with the same thing, you need to feel power in yourself. You are, you are the, you're the DM. So what you say goes. And I think that, um, you need to say when you're uncomfortable, whether that's in the moment or at the end of the, at the end of the session, you can, uh, let them know in a, in a, 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 a separate, um, just by themselves and be like, Hey, let's not do that anymore. But it makes me uncomfortable. And if they're not into that, yeah. then that's, that's a bye-bye. <laughs> uh, if right. I think it's, it's hard when you've gotten yourself in, not when you've gotten yourself, but when you have ended up or been put in that position, yeah. it's hard because you didn't have that conversation in advance and that's not your fault. Um, you should always have that conversation in advance though. And this just sort of proves the importance of our session zeros that we keep going on about. But I, I do think that it, you know, sometimes you end up in that situation and that sucks. It really sucks to yeah, be as a DM, already in the as middle a DM, of it. Yeah. And cause you, you always feel like you need to keep the session going and always feel like you need to uh, keep it lively and fun and entertaining because you are the one doing that as well. But if there's something that's uncomfortable, you stop it. Yeah, you need to you need to take agency for yourself and understand that everyone's enjoyment is not predicated on you feeling uncomfortable. And if the only way someone is having fun is by making you uncomfortable, then that's not a good fit. Nope. And that is a, a hard thing to accept and it's a hard thing to come to terms with and it can be a really hard conversation yeah, to have totally. and i really empathize with this person for because that's what they have to do they have to have an out of game exactly. out of character conversation saying hey i'm just not comfortable with what you're doing i'm not comfortable with the way you interact with these NPCs, especially given that they are all only of a certain type, that's putting some words in that person's mouth. But anyway, um, uh, it's hard. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It really does. And but you have to do it. You have to rip that bandaid off, yep. and you have to talk. There's to no them other way around because it. Because you just have to do it. There isn't. And and the thing is, if you don't, your enjoyment of the game is going to diminish. And if you're running the game, if you're the GM or the DM and you s start enjoying the game less and less, your players are going to enjoy the game less and less, too, which is not the reason to do it. The reason to do it is you deserve to be safe and happy yeah. and comfortable and you're not. So you need to talk about it. But know that. If you're not having fun, they're going to stop having fun, too. Yeah. Maybe not the asshole who's putting you in this position, but they're only an asshole if they keep doing it after you tell them not to. Yeah. If you have a conversation with them and say, hey, this is making me uncomfortable, if they're a reasonable human being and a good friend, they'll say, oh, shit, I'm sorry. Yeah, cool. Exactly. We'll, we'll not do it anymore. We'll back yeah. off. And if they don't do that, you don't want them on at your table. Nope. You don't because they're just going to make things bad and awkward and uncomfortable for not just you, but for everyone else at the table. Yeah. So it's, it's important to, it's hard and it sucks, but it's important to just have the conversation. Yeah. And to wrap up this amazing episode, at least in my opinion, um, we talked a, a chunk longer than we normally yeah, yeah. do. I think it's because I think it's, this is an important episode because I don't know. And it's, I think we'll probably revisit yeah, it in the yeah, future. Yeah, because I think that it's such a, it's a weird, it's weird. It's a weird thing to to talk about, um, and it shouldn't be. Some people are into it, some people aren't. But yeah, so uh, to wrap up, really what flirting and sex and like brothels and all this kind of stuff in your, in your games boils down to is consent and asking your players if they're into that, if they're okay with that, if they, what they're where their line is and then respecting that line. And that also goes for player player uh, relations as well. If, if they're okay with having a relationship in game, then, you know, and, and you're okay with that as well as the DM, then, you know, they can do that, but it, it all boils down to consent and to just hedge all of this off, do this all in session zero. <laughs> 
it's really easiest if you do but do please keep checking mm -hmm. in with your players and also know that with something like this something that is possible or likely to make people uncomfortable you're going to make mistakes other people are going to make mistakes and mistakes happen and the important thing to do when you make a mistake is to own the mistake and apologize and learn so that you don't make it again mm -hmm. in the future yeah which constant move on. checking in and move mm -hmm. on constant checking in constant communication that's that's really the key to so yeah. many things in life really everything in life but especially sex and D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for this episode of a game master's toolbox if you found this episode helpful please leave us a ranking ranking or rating is that a thing ranking who knows on iTunes? I would like to be the number one ranked <laughs> bullshit podcast. Done. In D &D Done. Middle. I've given it to you. Uh, Excellent. On iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast listening on. Also, go and check out our site. It's called thearcanery.com, where you can pick up a free 25 NPC PDF. Where, And if you leave us a review, you may be turned into an NPC for our future content creations. Thank you so much for listening to us. Babble. Bye. <laughs> Bye.